Hey friends, it's Devin here with Make Anything, reporting in from my new place here in Sweden, where uh, there's been some delays with the Polar Express, so I'm still waiting on some parts for my new computer so that I can properly make videos for y'all. But I know you've been anticipating the results for the Auxetic Art Competition, and that's why I'm running this old laptop from a literal potato to get the results to you as quickly as I possibly can. For those of you who have been living under an iceberg, last month I announced a competition around my auxetic cubes and these auxetic tiles that you can place on the cubes to create these transforming artworks. I asked all of you to print some out for yourself and submit your greatest creations as makes on thangs.com. While well, your submissions are in, the voting period has ended, and that means there's going to be some prizes to give out today. The two most liked makes, based on community votes, are going to win a $100 and $200 gift card to Matter Hackers or 3D Jake, and that's already been determined. But I also get my own Devin's Choice Award, and I'm going to be picking that today and giving away a Bamboo Lab Mini with AMS Combo. I know there's a recall going on, but we'll make sure we get you a machine that's working really well. I have an X1 Carbon running next door, and it's really cool. So hopefully I can make someone's day with that prize. But first, I just want to go ahead and look through all of the submissions so that I can critique them, talk about them, say what I like, what not. Whenever I go through user submissions, I like to give constructive criticism, so if I have words of improvement for you, don't take it too harshly. I just like to give some feedback uh, so you guys know where my mind's at. Anyways, let's go ahead to thanks.com and look at the entries for this Auxetic Tile Art Competition. Alright, here we are on my thanks page, and as per the rules, submissions could be made to either the 30 or 18 millimeter versions of the tiles here. And uh, there were a bit fewer submissions for the 30 millimeter tiles. I guess they're a little bit larger, take a little longer to print, but effectively they're the same. I asked y'all to stick with the diagonal tiles to make your art pieces. So that's the two diagonal triangles, as you see right here. And we're just gonna start from the bottom and work our way up through the submissions starting with this first entry by Beetle Build. And Beetle Build submitted quite a few designs and they were really awesome. I guess unsurprisingly, quite a few of them are in fact beetles. So this is a rhino beetle and I gotta say the print quality on these is lovely and the design is super cool. As you can see, there's some squares here as well as the diagonals, but that's effectively just the diagonal piece printed with both sides the same color. So that is legal in the competition. Although I did like the people who used strictly the diagonal tiles as well, but uh, no points docked here. This is a really beautiful design. As you can see in one position, it's this very clear beetle. And in the other, it's what Beetle Build is calling an interstellar rose, potentially. Uh, yeah, I see it as a kind of a flower. So that's really nice. I like that it has two different images there. This one's a bit more abstract, but still very cool. Next up, we've got this submission by Mirage. So we've got some diamonds, very striking blue and orange color combination. And in the second position, it turns into these kind of crisscross designs. So it's a nice transforming pattern. Nothing too crazy, but quite nice. Clean print. Here's another clean print. This is by The Phase, and we've got a pretty standard diamond pattern. So this is, you know, a pretty basic pattern. I don't know if it's gonna be uh, innovative enough to win my award, but I will say the print is very clean and the photographs are nice as well, so that's a great job. Here's another submission by Beetle Build. It's uh, a stag beetle, apparently. I'm learning things here. Another beautiful beetle, and I can imagine all of these beetles coming together to make a really cool collection. In the second position, it definitely turns into a bit of a jumble. 
possibly a fish. <laughs> uh, here's Wally, which uh, Beetle Build says it's a favorite Stellar Earth rubbish Robotron. Maybe that's the way of saying it without getting uh, in trouble with Disney, but it's Wally. Let's say it. It's super cute. I love the use of the uh, holographic build plate material to get that rainbow shimmer in the eyes. And then in the second position, it kind of still looks like a robot. Yeah. I guess that's the problem with using the square panels is they kind of don't change as you switch to different positions, but Beetle Build definitely did some of the cleanest prints. Here's a submission by Alex Bell, 86. Very nice, very simple stripes to triangles. It's a very simple pattern, but it's quite striking how it can change between those two, and that's what I love about these auxetic tiles. Here's another submission by Beetle Build. It's a transformer, and here's one position. And this isn't actually the same design, but I did see, I think on Twitter, that it's actually the same auxetic piece, but it's on the two different sides, the front and the back that make these two different characters. So I'd say that's a little bit off target for really taking advantage of the transforming nature of these auxetic tiles, but each piece on its own is very cool. Very nice, like, low bit pixel art deal going on. Next, we've got a submission by G Pearl 77 and they thought outside of the box a bit and actually made uh, all these blank white tiles that are meant to be used as uh, a dry erase surface. So you can draw a tree and transform that into another tree, perhaps. Here's a spiral that was transformed into this kind of starburst idea. And that's really fun. So G Pearl pretty much completely flipped the script here and created a kind of a new idea based on the auxetic tile. So it is still transforming art, but instead of using the uh, triangle shapes, you can make whatever you want, which I'm all for open-ended designs like that. Although, uh, I don't know. I have to debate on uh, if I'm gonna reward that. Here's another stunning beetle by Beetle Build. It's a minimalist rhino beetle, but it's just got this really cool filament that was used along with an octogram spiral infill on the bottom of the tiles, which is what creates this awesome rainbow pattern. And again, in the second position, it kind of turns into just an abstract piece. So it is kind of fun that maybe you would be handed the piece in this position, and then you have to try to guess what it'll transform into. That would be quite a puzzle. And there you go, the beetle. Absolutely beautiful. I told you there's a lot of beetles here from Beetle Build. Here is a auxetic ladybug. This one is a bit more abstract, but I love the colors. And as with all of the Beetle Build tiles, they're just super clean prints. Finally, here's another one by Beetle Build that is a firefly. And I love that it used the shimmering holographic bed plate again to get that effect across the whole uh, art piece. But not only that, Beetle Build also used a glow-in-the-dark tile for the end of the Firefly to make it actually glow. Super clever design there for the Firefly. And then here we've got Robin Kevin with an interesting design here. It's kind of a, a clover or these concentric hearts. Very nice. And it transforms into this radiating diamond pattern. So these are actually two really cool patterns and they used the same uh, color combination pretty much that I used for my auxetic table in the original video. These might even be the same polyterra filament. Now let's jump over to the 18 millimeter ones where we've got quite a bit more. So here starting at the bottom we've got uh, I don't even know how to say that username Zyodiva with the uh, this is a bit of a messy print, maybe. I think the photo could be a bit more clear and well lit, but it's a good attempt. I think that might even be a glow-in-the-dark filament, but it's a fairly standard design. 
And then uh, Michelle Bookout actually, it looks like created the same design, but with a more uh, trendy pastel color palette here. The pink and light purple it seems to be popular nowadays. Next up, we've got Mart Martin de Boer 8888 with this design that I guess is meant to resemble a Christmas tree under a log cabin, perhaps. It's also kind of a heart design. Unfortunately, Mark Den didn't show the other position, so I kind of want to see what the piece transforms into. After all, that's a big part of what these uh, auxetic artworks are all about. Anyways, next up we've got Svenenator 42, and it's another smaller design, a 4x4 auxetic structure, and it's kind of got these four sections, but I do like that it's asymmetrical in a sense, and even more so when you switch it into the other position. Then you've got one diamond, a bunch of down arrows, and this one up arrow kind of thing. I mean, it depends on what's the positive and negative space, but for me, the white stands out here. I, yeah, simple but striking and a cool piece of abstract art with the asymmetric look. Next up, we've got a few designs by Y and Nick. I really like this one because it's, again, quite simple, but very graphic. It's very stark, it stands out, and it creates a wonderful illusion of these towers, sort of. I see these towers that are sinking down, and uh, yeah, it's got perspective. It's, it's a really cool image. And here in the other position, it actually turns into a more abstract piece, but it's still very cool because it's kind of got this black and blue background and the white really pops out in the foreground. So great choice of colors and a really nice print as well and well photographed. Here's another one by Y and Nick with the same color palette. And this one is a eight by eight structure and it transforms into just another really cool chaotic piece. So yeah. It's cool because it looks like a, it kind of works all together, but then there's also the four separate corners that are almost repeating. Uh, not quite, there's some reflection, some radial symmetry, a pretty cool piece for sure. Now we've got Guy69422 with something that definitely looks more simple, but super clean and a, a very interesting shape. It kind of looks like these two pieces are sticking together it almost reminds me of a burr puzzle or something. It really gives me puzzle vibes. Maybe it's because of the wooden color choices. And yeah, this is another really interesting design. Very clean and well photographed. And next up we've got the Pau Wessel with another simple design. The diamond patterns seem to be common for a lot of people. The twist with this one, of course, is that there's some glow in the dark tiles which everything's cooler with a bit of glow in the dark. I think we can all agree on that. Here's another design by Michelle Bookout, and I quite love this one. It is pretty abstract, but it's got the Mondrian color palette that I really love, and yet it still stands out as its own type of style. It doesn't look like a ripoff at all. It's very abstract in both positions, but very interesting. And it seems like there's still some thought put into this composition. It speaks to me. I really like it. Another clean print as well. Next we've got Takak. Takak. People really choose the most difficult to read usernames, I gotta say. I'm having trouble with a lot of these. But here's another print, black and white, very striking. And it looks like it was also done with that holographic PEI build material. Very cool, clean print. It's got a tiling type of look to it. Well done. On the other end of the spectrum, going from black and white to really vibrant colors, we've got this pretty large eight by eight design by Nis NL Smith Rose. And I love the CMY color palette. And yeah, it turns into these two different kinds of starbursts. One here is kind of pointing inwards, and the other one looks like it's bursting outwards. I think they look really cool in both orientations. 
Here we've got one that's less abstract, and uh, it's a beautiful wolf, perhaps, by Bibir David. Uh, yeah, very cool pattern, very nice symmetry, and just a really graphic, stark wolf here. And there we can see it in the other position. And as with a lot of these auxetic designs, they turn into like a scatter of triangles. So it kind of, I don't know, it's crazy. It almost looks like the wolf when it got angry. I really like both of these, but especially this first pattern. It's just a lovely composition, a really great job of creating this wolf. Now we've got Mizuhashi.yuki. And this one's interesting. It's also got a bit of a 3D effect to it, just with these two black sides. And then there's a lot of interesting stuff. There's a kind of a pinwheel here, arrows here. There's a lot going on in this little six by six grid, which is pretty cool. And then that turns into this other structure, which almost looks like a, maybe a pagoda type structure of some sort. I like that it's not so obvious. I kind of like both ends, you know, the wolf is really cool because it's very clearly a wolf and it's done so well, but this also lets you kind of uh, imagine a bit more. All right, up next we've got this design by Kay Taylor, and uh, it's very shiny, it looks like it was done with silk filament. Yeah, very interesting. I don't know if it's just the way it's photographed, but the two colors do kind of blend together for me. I think it would have been really cool to have maybe one of the colors be silk and the other one be a flat or matte filament, like if it was the purple and then maybe just a regular white filament that would really stand out a bit more. But it's a very clean print, so I like it. Next up we've got R. Taylor with a kind of uh, throwing star design. I see a star in here and I, this is actually exactly what I was talking about. It's a combination of a more matte black filament and this very shimmery green. And is that the transformation? Yeah, it looks like, so it's kind of just pinwheels that switch orientation when you flip them around. Pretty interesting. Next up, we've got Charles DePau with uh, a yellow and orange, and this yellow one looks like there might've been a bit of over sticking to the build plate. There's this kind of molten looking texture going on with it. I don't know if that was intentional, but it's kind of crazy. It makes it look a lot more organic, almost like it was painted rather than printed. Oh, and it looks like it fluoresces a bit under black light as well, so that's cool. Here's another one by Michelle Bookout. And uh, yeah, a simple diamond to stripe pattern as we've seen with some concentric printing done. It's a bit light, a bit faded out looking, so I made, I personally would have gone for a more uh, stark contrast between the colors. And as I say it, here's another really contrasty design by P. DiCaprio. And wow, this one's awesome. This is just like the classic red, yellow, blue, green, but it's on a black background or with black tiles. And especially in this position, it creates a really dynamic swirl. It kind of has motion to it and a lot of interesting colors. And I actually even just like the choice of using white for the base tiles, because in this open position, it kind of gets brighter, and then when it closes up, it gets dark again. So that's really cool. All right, let's move up to RT Cello Girl. And here we have a very lovely design. It's a very clear heart with three different colors going on, and it's got that really cool combination of silk with matte filaments and the heart turns into this other pattern, which is almost an upside down heart, but also just more of a burst pattern. I do like the color choices. The teal really pops on that one. Here by Tammy GR or Tamiger. We've got a more abstract design here. To me, it kind of looks like seahorses, but I'm sure that's just me and other people see their own things. Oh, wait, it actually says double seahorses. Okay, so we are on the same page. I did not read that, I saw the seahorses. So that's pretty interesting. That's such a simple image, uh, reminded us of the same thing. And here it is in the opposing position. It creates some squares and some triangles. A very clean and a great contrast on this print. It stands out, but it's red and white instead of black and white, making it a little interesting. 
Here, uh, Andil Apart, Andil Apart, another hard one to say, but uh, this is a very interesting submission because they actually turned it into a puzzle game of sorts where the pattern creates a maze, and I guess as you move, you might switch the tiles back and forth, which makes the maze completely change. It's not super clearly explained exactly how it would work. I don't know if this puzzle here is solvable, but it's definitely an interesting idea. And again, I like the contrast on this white and teal. Here's another design by Michelle Bookout. Very cool graphic square design. And here it creates kind of a square within a square without there actually being so many squares. A lot of interesting like suggestions of shapes on this one. Pretty cool. Next up, we've got Andreas Mass, and this is just a very clean and stunning print. Photographed really nice and clear, and Andreas went a little bit above and beyond by using modifiers on the actual auxetic tile structure to make it a multicolor print. So besides the tiles on top, there's also these diamond patterns on the sides, and it switches between purple and gold. And overall, it's just a really clean print. The spiral is really cool, and I think it's a good color choice for the spiral, too. It looks very kind of uh, mesmerizing and psychic. Next up, we've got Jay Pullman, 2001, who made a chessboard. And yeah, a few people on my original Auxetic Tile video suggested making a chessboard. Although I'm not exactly sure, I guess it wouldn't affect the gameplay, because if you switch between one position and the other, all the squares are going to stay in the same position. It kind of will just rotate the chess pieces in their spots. So yeah, it's kind of a fancy chess board, but it doesn't actually change the game of chess, and it doesn't transform when you switch between positions. So pretty cool to share, but maybe not for this competition. Next up, Kalf Eek KW made two different designs. We've got this nice blue and white, a kind of Greek styling. And uh, yeah, I really like this version of it. The triangles are just going in cool positions, but you've also got this great big X going through it. And here's another submission, which is black and teal. It looks like a really nice clean print. I just wish the lighting was a bit better for the photograph. The, yeah, the glare on it kind of distracts from the pattern itself. So this was about submitting makes. So not only am I judging the pattern here, but I also want the submission images to look really nice and clear. And here's a pretty ex good example. This one also has some glare going on, but the colors are just so bright and stark that it's very easy to see. I love this color combination. It's crazy, it's energetic, and uh, it looks like this creates kind of a, a little angry face in the second position, so pretty fun there. Now we've got another submission by Marley52209. It's another very striking graphic image. I love Marley's uh, compositions here. And this is the second position, which is abstract, but it's also got shapes within shapes, which a lot of these auxetic tiles do. But I love how it's done on this one in particular. And then this one, it's a bit more orderly. Next up, we've got Evan Tostado, 64. And uh, it looks like there's a bit of uh, trouble with the extrusion on this print, but it's a nice bright blue on an orange background. And this is a pretty cool symbol looking pattern here. Yeah, it definitely looks like a rune, some kind of symbol from an ancient civilization. My creative user did some kind of custom tile here with these little snakes apparently. So this isn't using the diagonal tiles that are required for the competition, but maybe this user just wanted to share their cool tile remix here. I do like it. It's pretty abstract, but interesting. Some red dots, some black, white, and gray. Yeah, pretty fun. Next up, we've got Say Excess Sexus Ben with this lovely pattern. It's similar to the very colorful pattern we saw earlier, but a slightly different palette here. Super clean, and I really like these muted versions of the kind of primary color set. Awesome colors, awesome photography, and a really cool design. That's one to be proud of. 
Next up, we've got another one by Marley, and here it is exploded, and boom, it turns into this really cool tiger. There's a very clear image here, a nice fierce tiger. I love the color choices. The pink background makes the actual tiger pop out a lot, and it matches with the nose, and there's some subtle color choices here as well with this tan on the uh, jowl. And in the second position, it turns into a kind of goofier looking animal, but it's still an animal, which is pretty interesting. And the mouth turns into a bit of a neck. And uh, yeah, maybe it's a bit of a fox design. I like it. It's, it's definitely readable as an animal head in both positions, which is very cool. Next up, we've got KG Dean with a very colorful rainbow pattern. I love the colors here and very interesting choice to make it off center because this same exact pattern with the same auxetic tiles, like this could have been in the middle here and it would have looked a lot more like some of the other submissions, but just putting it off to the side like that makes it stand out, but it's still very clear and clean and yeah, really cool rainbow pattern. Next up, we've got e Mare 62 We've got a white and green color choice, which is new. And yeah, it's a very lovely choice. These would make some beautiful tiles. So uh, I like the idea of using these auxetic tiles just for ideating different patterns. Next up, we've got Danny Parrot with a very metallic looking design. We've got silver and gold against black. That makes a really nice contrast and I think these are a few different submissions because we've got several different patterns here. So I think the last one goes with the first one here. And then we've also got this more standard concentric diamond pattern. Again, a pretty simple pattern, but very striking use of colors. Here we've got some by Layer Legacy, and it looks like they created a set, so kind of a brighter version and a slightly dimmer version. The top one almost seems to glow in comparison to the lower side. And yeah, we've got some arrows that turn into these ton of arrows. It's very simple again, but I like the color choice, a very natural, uh, interesting selection there. Next up, we've got Liam Krola. And this one is super cool. It looks like, according to Liam, this was inspired by Midwest Barn Quilts, which I'm actually not familiar with. I'll have to look them up because I really like this pattern. You've got what looks like a black diamond intertwined with a gray square here. It has a great depth effect and it also looks really cool in the alternate position. And here's a second design, which is a, a bit more of a spiral looking thing. And again, very cool in both orientations and a very clean print. Here's another one by Layer Legacy. Again, it's incredibly clean with the printing here. You gotta love that with the multi-pass technique. You get to work with the first layer of your print. So as long as you've got a nice level print and your print settings are good, you can get some really clean multicolor graphics. Here we've got checkers and diamonds that are turning into more triangle-like shapes. Pretty cool. Moving on, we've got Evan2007 with this six by six that was inspired by desert mirages and stained glass. And I love this design because it's got so many colors going on, but they're used very tactfully. It's not overly done. And this actually looks kind of like a figure to me. This actually reminds me a lot of the stained glass portrait of Princess Peach on the, the castle in Mario 64. That's a bit of a dated reference and maybe not exactly what they were going for here, but I love it. Making it a stained glass design is genius because the tiles are pretty thin and Evan used some kind of transparent filaments, it looks like, to create this really awesome luminescent design when backlit. So I am a huge fan of this one. I love that it's kind of abstract, but you can also see a figure in there. Just the use of these two skin tone 
uh, triangles in the middle turns it into a bit of a portrait, which is really interesting. Uh, there's a lot of complexity for a little 6x6 six six design. Add the fact that there's the stained glass touch to it. Super cool. Up next, we've got Ren's Makes with this really silky, shiny design. Red and gold. And it's kind of this twisting pinwheel, as many of these are, with just a gold square in the middle. And that transforms into this kind of circular triangle thing. You know, triangles inherently create movement, so a lot of these auxetic patterns have a kind of movement that leads your eyes around the piece. So I think that's very cool as well. All right, we're down to the last few. We've got another submission by Y and Nick. Lots of submissions by Y and Nick. And this one is a kind of simple zigzag here with cubes, but again, it's creating a great depth effect because there's a one, two, three value thing going on here that creates these kind of stacked cubes. And in the other position, it turns again into a more abstract shape with just a bunch of squares and triangles. I gotta say, this one definitely is more successful in this one orientation versus the other, but yeah, I love the idea of getting depth like this, a 3D effect on a very two-dimensional medium. Up next, we've got Vivlane Rusin. Vivlane is awesome, they're in my Discord all the time, a very active uh, user in the Make Anything community. We've seen three different animal heads, and you know, I hate to pick favorites, but I guess that's kind of what I'm doing for this whole competition, so I gotta say, this is probably my favorite animal head, just because there's a lot of subtlety and complex color choices again, and the transformation is quite stark. It turns from this very angular, pointed fox look. It's got a, a bit of aggression like a lot of these do just because of the tilt of the eyes. But in the second position, the eyes actually tilt the other way and it ends up kind of looking more tamed. So maybe it's like a, a tamed bear and a wild fox. But yeah, the bear definitely uh, would be less obvious for me. I don't know if I would call that a bear right away. To me, it almost looks like the regular fox, and then the fox after it's contracted rabies. But yeah, I love the choices and the fact that there's kind of a pattern going on in the background as well shows that there was a lot of thought put into this pattern, a lot of complexity done with this 8x8 auxetic structure. Very beautiful. Now we're down to the final two designs, and they're also the two that got the most votes. This is going to be the second place in terms of the community voting, and it's You Wish 500 with this triangular pattern made with the Palestinian flag colors. So in this position, we've got stripes, and that transforms into these triangles, which kind of blend the stripes together. I actually really like the transformation between these two. It is just simple uh, stripes, you know, but the fact that there's four colors involved makes it a little bit more interesting when you transform between the two. So congratulations, you wish 500. They won the $100 gift card to Matter Hackers or 3D Jake. And the final design up here, which clearly got a lot of support by friends and family, is B Walker 3D17 with this very flashy yellow and black design. Or is that gold maybe? It's kind of a gold yellow. So it's kind of got a wasp bee attitude to it. Again, it's fairly simple with the uh, zigzags all pointing inwards, but B Walker did throw in these two diamonds in the middle to kind of change it up. And in this position, it's quite interesting. It's kind of this vertical shape here with squares or diamonds, and then all the surrounding triangles pointing inward. So again, it's very dynamic, very clean print as well. And like I said, with these community prints, it basically comes down to who can garner the support, who can get their friends and family and support base to come to things and vote for their makes. B Walker blew it out of the water with 71 likes on this make. So congratulations, B Walker. You won the $200 gift card to 3D Jake or Matter Hackers. All right, finally it's time for the Devon's Choice Award, 
where I'll be selecting one submission to win a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini with AMS Lite combo. It is my pleasure, but also my burden, to have to choose just one winner. Obviously, the Make Anything community is, you know, one of the most creative groups out there. There are so many awesome designs, so many different takes on where to go with these auxetic tiles, and it was quite a joy to go through all of the submissions. So, yes, I do have to pick just one, but before I do that, I wanna give honorable mention to two other designs, just to spread out the love a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have more printers to give out, but my praise is hopefully worth something. So my first honorable mention goes to Wyan Nick with that kind of tower design, as I call it. The very stark and graphic look of it just stood out to me. I found that pretty cool. And the depth that's created from just three colors and just these few diamond patterns was really awesome. I think that was just the most successful design in terms of creating depth, a real 3D effect on this flat canvas that is the auxetic tiles. So awesome job there. And I wanna give yet another honorable mention to Vivilane Rusin with that very charming fox to bear design. The color choices, the pattern in the background, and the great transformation between the two animals really stood out to me, even among the other animals out there. Uh, that was definitely one of my favorites. I loved the decisions that were made in creating that, so great job. But as far as the winner of the Devon's Choice Award goes, I have to pick one, and I'm going with Evan2007 and that stained glass design. That decision to use the transparency of these thin tiles and backlight it to create this stained glass look I have to say it was probably the most inspiring make to me. It's really something that has me now thinking that I might wanna go back and create some backlit stained glass type designs with the auxetic tiles or some other way. But yeah, I had to pick it because it inspired me and that's what Make Anything is all about. On top of the really cool idea of making it stained glass, the color choices were also really cool. There's a lot of subtle differences in colors uh, a real complexity in this very limited space that is the auxetic cubes. And uh, again, it works in both positions when it transforms. So that also was very important to me, the fact that it looks really good in both positions. Super inspiring, super cool design. So congrats, Evan2007. You won yourself a 3D printer. All right, well, my candle's burning low and I'm gonna cook this potato up for dinner. So, Thank you so much for watching and tuning in for the results of this competition. Thanks again to everyone who competed. You're all awesome. Y'all inspire me like crazy and keep me going here on Make Anything. And well, I've got some really cool stuff coming out. I should finish building my computer this week as long as everything gets to me in time. And uh, yeah, look out for some great new content and probably some more competitions relatively soon. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Take care out there. And as always, stay inspired. Oh, gotta unplug it first. <laughs>